Listen, what about you take the mic and let us start a debate? What do you think, guys? Just don't change the topic. Choose a topic, no problem. We'll talk about Trinity, we'll talk about Trinity. You own all the topic, choose a topic, but you promise me, you promise me when we choose it, we don't change. Which means if you want to talk about Trinity, we will talk about Trinity, and I'm afraid to answer you the way I want. And you have to answer me too when I ask you. So choose a topic, here we go, the mic is used. No problem, choose a topic, here we go. He, you know, this guy, is his specialty only Trinity. He's afraid to ask him about something else. His specialty is a Trinity. No problem, let us see who is the, you see the brave man, the brave one is the one who accepts questions about anything. And you are welcome to ask me any question you want. But in your case, you are the one who's terrified. You say to me only Trinity, okay? Ask me Trinity, anything else? I will not talk about the Trinity. You know, my name is a Trinity. So, okay, take the mic. Trinity, Trinity, the mic is yours. Go ahead. That's very good. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see how long you can last just talking about the Trinity, because I'm telling you, you will not last uh, for, for too long. Okay, so the, tr uh, the Trinity, what is the difference then? Tell me, like honestly, the difference between the concept of Trinity, and I don't say this honestly as an insult, I believe we, we should have a no insult policy. The difference between uh, the, tr the concept of Trinity as understood by Christians uh, and the concept of uh, the Trinity as understood, or the forms of Trinity as understood in pagan Greek times. Uh, um, Zeus the father, Heracles the uh, the, um, the son, and the whatever the the other son. They had families, um, the father, the son, the the holy Metator. You get the point. Like they had, there was concepts of Trinity that were uh, found in the Greek civilizations. What is the real difference between what they believed in? And what uh, what Christian prince believes in? Thank you very much. <clears throat> that's deep. That's tough. Unbelievable. Uh, Sunni, can I call a friend? Is, is it okay if I call a friend? Because this is really hard. This is tough. Sunni, first of all, we Christians, we don't believe in the family of Trinity. Guys, do you believe that God, he married from Mary and they have a son, his name is Jesus? Do we believe in that? So what you said is very, very funny and showing me the ignorance of Islam. Actually, this is not your ignorance. This is the ignorance of your God. I'm not insulting, by the way. Is it your God who said? Which is a clear proof that Allah do not understand Christianity, that the Christians believe that Jesus and his mother and Allah is God, which means according to your trinity in Islam, or the understanding of your God of the trinity, you believe that the trinity is Allah and Mary and Jesus. And that is the Greek trinity you are talking about. That is your God understanding because he is limited and he is not educated. But the trinity in Christianity never include Mary and never include any sexual relationship and never include that there is a baby is born and he is born because God gave birth. Christians, do you believe that God gave birth? No, absolutely, this is false. And that is showing us that Islam is nothing but a scam for we do not believe in such a thing. Secondly, Islam even contradicts itself about the Trinity. The Quran says, those who say the Messiah is Allah. Hold on. How are you saying that the Christians believe in three? Three. Three. And then you say that the Christian, they say they believe that the Messiah is Allah. That's mean they believe in one God. Correct? This is what the Quran is saying. If we go in the Quran, in chapter 5, verse number 17, it says, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ Those who say that the Messiah is Allah is kuffar. That's what the Quran is saying. So according to your Quran, the Christian believe in one God, and that is the Messiah, who he is God. Not second God, not third God, 
not for God. And that means we are the one who believe in one God, not the Muslims. Now let us see if Allah is a is a is a is a one coming from the Greek mythology. Isn't it the Quran says that the ones who used to follow Allah before Islam, they believe that Allah have three daughters? Is that correct, guys? Allah, before Muhammad he came, he has always three daughters, Allah and Al Uzza and Manat. And then Muhammad he says, no, Allah don't have three daughters. But the root of the religion of Islam or the root of the followers of Allah says it clearly that Allah is a God who was worshipped before Islam and he have three daughters. Now, if we go in the Quran, can somebody help me, guys? Sunni, I want you to answer this. In chapter 53, verse number 21, it says, chapter 53, verse number 21. Actually, if somebody can post uh, uh, verse number 19, the same chapter, 53, 19 and 20, and then 21. What is Allah oppose of calling him having three daughters? Guys, are you posting the verses for me? Nobody is helping. I am an Arab now. What's wrong with you? Is that the only question you have? Somebody speaking Arabic, what he will be? Obviously Japanese. But come on. Are you an Arab? Are you an Arab? You stuck with this question? Guys, the Quran says in chapter 53, verse number 20, 19, 20, 21. Do you see Allah and Al-Uzza? Allah speaking. And Manad, the third one? For you, the male, and for me, the, the, the female? That is unjust division. So what Allah has complained? Allah in this verse is complaining that he don't like to have two female daughters. Like what? Hello, you take the fem the male for you to make them the rest of your sons. And for me, you give me the females. This is unjust. Do you see it? That's an amazing answer. So Allah, he like to have, if you want to have, you like to have male son. You don't like to have daughters. And the one is saying that is Allah himself, not me. Now let us give the mic to uh, to Mr. Sunni to give him a chance to answer. Your mic, Sunni. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. I'm actually quite happy with the response you gave because I said in the previous, the first time I came on the mic, that the Christians are unable to speak about the Trinity. They, they, they just run away from the topic. And what did you do? <laughs> Run away from the topic. You didn't even finish. I thought after 20 minutes, you would change the topic. You did it much quicker. So well done. But I want to go back, not about Allah to Uzza, Mana. We want to stick to the topic of Trinity. Uh, look. Sunni, I did not change the topic. And you are, you are a liar. Guys, did I change the topic? We are speaking about the Trinity. I'm showing you that you Muslims are the one who follow the Trinity. Your God is more than one, and we are the one who worship one God. So we are on the same topic. I quote for your verses from the Quran have to do with the topic. Not about your prophet having sex with the women. We are talking about your God having three daughters. Huh? Your God have a wife, your God have daughters, and your God don't like to have daughters, but he like to have sons. And I gave the reference, and you are the one is running away from answering. So you are saying to me, the 20 minute I was saying to you the reference from the Quran, you will jump over it and you will not answer, right? You will, you will not tell us why Allah is saying, ah, for you, you have the three, for me, you give me the females, and for you, uh, uh, the males, this is unjust. Why Allah is saying this is unjust? Why the non Muslims saying Allah have three daughters? And why Allah rejecting the three daughters? He's saying, for you, the female, for, for me, the female daughters, and for you, the male sons, this is unjust. So who is the one who believe in Trinity and kids and sons and daughters? It's your Islam. So take the mic and don't jump, please. I want you not to ignore. I did not ignore your question. I answered you. Don't ignore my question and don't ignore what I gave you as verses. Your mic.
So that's also another trait. I, I, the Christian speaks. I'm listening very patiently. Then when I speak, he doesn't like his red dots. But that's fine. You know. Look, if you ask me, what is the opinion on what is the, does Islam say about uh, the night journey, the Salat al Mi'raj? I'm not going to say the Christian Bible say. I'm going to answer you from my religion. So if I ask you about the Trinity, you you should answer me from from your own book or from your own beliefs. Why would you need the, the Muslim? Why would you need the Quran to support your beliefs? You see, so you still didn't answer the question. Like you, you, you. So you were not answering me, right? I am answering you from the Quran because you don't believe in the Bible anyway. If I spend my day speaking from the Bible, you will say to me, "Oh, don't I believe in this book anyway?" Correct, guys. If I answer you from the Quran, you cannot say to me, "I don't believe in the Quran." So you are running away from my question. We just prove that you Muslims are pagan. Your God was pagan, exists before Islam, and he have daughters. And Allah, he don't like to have daughters. He have, he like to have sons. Now I want to repeat the question again, guys. Be my witness. This guy will not answer. Why Allah? He says, why Allah? He says, I don't like to have daughters. I like to have sons. For you. The daughters, for me, the daughters, and for you, the sons. Chapter 53, verse number 21. And he is saying this is unjust, the division. And just. So if we give Allah the son, if we give, if we make him have a son, this is just. Explain to us your mind. Are you calling a friend, Sunni? Don't play dead. Take the mic. Go ahead. So why, why Allah, he don't like to have daughters, but he like to have son? Because he's saying this is unjust. Huh? What is a complaint? What is a complaint of Allah? Huh? For you, the daughters? For me, the daughters? And for, me, for you, the sons? The male? So Allah don't like to have female daughters. That's all. The mic is yours. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So first of first of all, uh, I still object to the fact that you did not answer my question. I will very quickly answer this irrelevant question to Trinity. It's irrelevant, but I will answer it because it seems to be burning deep inside you. Right. Right. Uh, uh, first of all, first of all, uh, the Arabs took just like the Christians. Uh, they took partners beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, uh, uh, they took people who they, uh, who they regarded as, uh, as intercessors with Allah. As, uh, for as, so, for example, they would say, uh, as, we, as you mentioned, Manat, Aulat, uh, and Uzza. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 is here ridiculing them. He's ridiculing them. Because these were the same Arabs who would kill their male offspring. Yeah, sorry, they would, I apologize, they would kill their female offspring. Uh, if, they, if they have a daughter, the daughter will be seen as a shame That's on, the, on, the, on, on the honor. Oh, you know, and, the, and you know the, the pagan Arabs, uh, even uh, unfortunately, uh, until quite recently, Arabs uh, and, and, and African, you know, different nationalities in, 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 um, in the developing um, the world, they look down as, uh, as having, uh, with having daughters as a stain, as, as, a, as a liability. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, by your logic, by your logic, you are, uh, you think it's a shame to have a daughter, so why are you saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has daughters? Do you, you see? Yeah? Anyway, this is a different, uh, uh, and read the books of tafsir. You cannot seriously think that the Quran is advocating Trinity. You cannot seriously think that. And you would have to be crazy. First of all, read any book of tafsir, any book of, of Quranic explanation. Not a single one of them uh, 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 this issue is not even raised. The Quran is uh, from the beginning to the end talks about the oneness of Allah, about only worshiping Allah. That, that pay, uh, Christians are pagans because they take intercessors beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm happy to talk about Tawheed, by the way, the oneness of Allah. But I just feel that it's a it's a Christian room. Let's talk about the Trinity. Hold on, hold on, guys. 
Did he say, did he say that the Arab they hate to have females? Did he say that? We heard him, right? From his mouth. But the verse I gave you, it is Allah who is saying, for you, the male, and for me, the female, this is unjust. So he is not showing their hypocrisy, he is showing his own hypocrisy. He is the one saying, why, why he, he didn't say, I don't have daughter, I don't have, you know, he said, for you, the female, for me, for, for you, the male, for me, the female, this is unjust. So Allah here is complaining about just, and what is the just is? The just is that Allah should have male sons. Now you are the one who said you go by tafsir, right? And you are the one who said Allah don't have a wife. Here we go. This is the chapter 21, verse number 17. Allah saying, if you like to have a son, he is going to have sex with the black-eyed women. We are talking about a trinity. If Allah wants to have a son, to have a trinity, he needs to have a wife. And who is the wife? Allah says, from our kind, from our self. Allah, if you are saying to me that your God Allah is one, how Allah in the Quran He says from ourselves, our kind, ourselves, Allah is going to marry from His from His self. If we want to take a partner, if we want to take a partner, we will take a partner with with ourselves. Allah will partner Himself, and that ourself. If we go and see the tafsir, it says it is the black-eyed women. So the black-eyed women, they are from the same kind of Allah, and Allah is going to have sex with the black-eyed women so he can have son. The mic is yours, Sonny. And here we go. I'm showing you your Islamic interpretation, and you are the one who mentioned tafsir. That's not my words. The mic is yours. Go ahead. I mean, I mean, we want to speak about Islam. I look, I love Islam. I think Islam is the true guidance. You should only right, speak about it. Right, but right, I, right. You know, you clearly are ashamed to speak about Trinity. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, that's fine. But I just want to put that on the record that you literally don't want to speak about the Trinity anymore. Uh, after, look at the same verse you mentioned. Hold on, hold on, guys. Did I, from the beginning, I said we believe in one God? Did I say that? You are the one who failed to show me that worship. When you say Trinity, what do you mean? One God or you wish you mean three gods? We worship one God. And I showed you that your God Allah, the Quran, have a very bad understanding of Christianity. So if you say to me that your Christian believe three, they are one, that means your God Allah himself is an idiot. Because in the Quran he says, that those who say Mary and Jesus and Allah are the God. The third, the Quran says the third, right? So your God, Allah, how come you understand the Trinity of Christians more than Allah? Isn't it weird? You, Abdul, Abdul, who do not know, like you don't have education like Allah. Allah, he wants to stand for the university. How come your God, Allah, do not understand the Trinity? So I answered you from the Quran to show you that your God Allah, same as all Muslims, don't understand the Trinity, but I think you have a better understanding from your God. That's why I advise Muslims to worship you from now on, because you are the one all knowledgeable, or oh, Allah knows best. No, that's not true. It is Sunni who knows best. So Mr. Sunni, I gave you the answer. I said, we Christian, we worship one God. You are the one who failed to give me any proof that we don't worship one God. Guys, did this guy since he came in the room, he gave us any proof that we worship three gods? Did he? None. Or what you say, the Trinity. But Trinity for us is one God. God, he came in this earth. God, he went up to heaven. God come to us as a spirit. That is God. God, he can come to us in the way he wants, for he is the almighty. Now, I want you to explain to me, please. Again. This is the link, everybody, I want everybody to open. This is Allah, the God of Islam, saying, if you like to have a partner as a wife, huh, in order to have a child, he is going to have a partner with ourself. Allah is saying he will have partner from ourself. That's mean Allah, he is saying, 
there's many of me because when you say ourselves, it's mean there's many of you and when Allah speak about having a partner in order to have a woman in order to have a son sorry he is talking about having a sexual relationship that's mean Allah have a sexual organs and he cannot perform having sons without having sex he need to have a woman this way in different verse in the Quran Allah he says how I can have a son if I don't have a girlfriend but in this verse Allah explained more he said in order for me to have a son I am going to have a son if I want by having a partner from ourself who is ourself they are female women who live in heaven which mean and and the funny it says even the angels which I find very weird that Allah is going to have sex with the angel Jibreel do you see it imagine the angel Jibreel he got the breath net and he have not he is he, today now he's coming to us into this room and he is nine month breath and he will deliver a baby very soon and then we will call him Isa the mic is yours Sunni. please don't forget to read for us the interpretation and tell us what he's saying there your mic go ahead okay later the room what the question was the question is what's the difference between the concept of Trinity of God Son Holy Spirit and the Greek concept of Zeus, son, wife, and a whole family. I told you, the Greek, they believe that God's having sex. We don't have such a thing. And that is not the trinity of the Greek. I answer you already. Guys, did I answer him from the beginning? It looked like you are deaf. But I understand. The prophet, he said, when a Muslim, he sleep, shaitan, he pissed in his ears. And that's why you are not listening. We don't believe that God have sex with Mary and they have a son, his name, baby son, his name is Jesus. We don't. That is false. Even your Quran confirm that Jesus is the word of God. Is that correct, Christians? And that confirmed the Bible. The Bible says that the word became a man. The word became a man. Not the egg of a woman became a man. Not God slept with Mary make, and made a man. No. The word of God and the word of God is what is God John chapter 1 verse number 1 and John chapter 1 verse 14 and your Quran confirm in chapter 4 verse 171 that Allah he sent down the word which is Isa which is the Messiah to Mary so what is the what who is the one who became a man it is the word so even in your religion Abdul God your God never said he have sex with Mary to make her pregnant he sent down his word and Mary was a virgin so your stupid analogy of the Greek it's mean you yourself you Muslims are stealing stories from the Greek because your God he said to Jesus did you say to your people to worship me and my mother We don't believe in that. So now take the mic, please, and don't don't change the topic. The topic is a trinity. And the trinity in the front of your eyes. Allah wanna have a wife in order to have a son. That is the Greek trinity. We prove it in your Quran. Correct, guys? Isn't it obvious? Allah, if you want to have a son, he is going to marry a woman. And that woman is a black eyed holy women she who live in heaven but at the end of the day she's a woman a woman is mean a human being and then he will have a son that is the trinity and your god saying it is possible for him to do it if he want to do it this is what he would do it and this is how he would do it now you tell me how your god is the almighty but he believe in order for him to have a son he need to have a partner she is a wife and she is from black black eyed women in heaven and then he would have someone, his name is Isa, and that would be the son of God. Your mind. I hope I'm not going to be red dotted after like two seconds. First of all, I thank you for that answer. You, you went into great depth. You, you know, you educated me on the difference between the Greek mytho uh, mythology and ah. the Christian concept of Trinity. Ah. So I then have a following up because now this raises an issue. So you're saying that Jesus 
he's a spiritual son, but he's not a uh, physical, like he, he, there was no sex involved, there's no intimacy involved. Okay, great, great. Uh, I, we're, we're hitting there. So now I ask you, Christian Prince, are you a son of God? Are you a son of God? According to the Bible. You see now, the Muslims, they want to get funny. I am not part of the Trinity. Son of God, when they ask Jesus how to pray, how do we can pray? God, what he said? He said, pray like this. Say our Father out of heaven. So here the word son, I am a son of God. I'm a child of God because God is my protector. He is my provider. And he is my founder. That's a different meaning. I am not the same as Jesus. He is the word of God. I am not. So don't change the topic. I want you first to read this verse and answer it, and then you go to whatever you want to do. Because obviously you are trying to escape the disaster of your God saying he is going to have sex with eyed, black-eyed women, and he will have a baby from them if you want to have a son. That is the whole idea. You don't want to answer. You don't want to read it. You are ashamed. What kind of God? He cannot have a son unless he have a sex with the women. And those women are created, obviously, according to the Quran, for the Muslim men to have sex with them. So now you who sleep with the Muslim women, Allah will sleep with. That is a disaster. Your God and you will share the same women in the same bed. That is your God words and that's your scholars. The mic is yours. I'm still waiting for you to answer, but obviously you will not. You're mine. Before you read that, I was going to ask you, what is the main difference between you as a son of God and Jesus as a son. I know he's got a special relationship. You're saying he's got this special relationship. What's the difference between you as a son of God or Abraham as a son of God and between Jesus as a son of God? You will not read the verse again, correct? The whole idea, you will not read it. I will answer you. Guys, did Jesus say it before Abraham I am? He said, what's the difference between you and Jesus and Abraham, right? Did Jesus say before Abraham I am? And Abraham, he witnessed my day. So the existence of Jesus, which means his birth, have nothing to do with the existence of the Word of God. He was the Word of God before he was born as a man. So being a man had nothing to do with the existence of the Word of God. The Word of God is eternal. I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, I am the end. Before Abraham I am. That is the words of Jesus. So Jesus is the everlasting God. He has exist before Abraham. He has exist before mankind, and his existence had nothing to do with his birth. And this is what Jesus said. In the same time, in the same time, Jesus, as the Word of God, he proved himself to be the Word of God. How he proved that? He's holy. Even the Quran, chapter 19, verse 19, it says, the Holy Son. Allah is saying to Mary, I will send to you to thee. The gift of a holy son. Who is the gift of the holy son? Chapter 4, verse 171 says that he is the word of Allah. Even, even that verse saying that Jesus is a, the word of God and the spirit proceeding from him, which means it's I-N-G, continue proceeding. This spirit is connected to God. That's the Quran. Imagine that is in the Quran. The Quran witness that Jesus is a spirit proceeding from him. Somebody pause for me, please. Do you see it? Is Adam a spirit proceeding from Allah? No. Is Adam? No. Is Abraham? No. Only Jesus. Is any of them is the word of God? No. So the Quran itself, the same verse which is denying the Trinity, the same verse is confirming the Trinity. For Jesus is the word of God who became a man. And he is. He is the spirit of God, which is a proceeding from God. And he's the man. Three. The word, the spirit, and the man. In the same verse, Allah is confirming that. Which means Jesus cannot be Jesus exist without the word, according to the Quran. And Jesus cannot be Jesus exist without the spirit in the Quran. And the spirit and the word, they are not going to be exist without Jesus. In the Quran, the three is one. Now I will give you the mic back, and I will repeat my question to the the, the, the second, the, the fifty time. Why this verse, Mister Sunni, saying? You guys, be my witness. Do you think he's going to read it? 
people in the room do you think he's going to read it he will not right because obviously his god is not real actually there's a verse in the Quran that says how can i have a son if i don't have a girlfriend allah saying that how i can have a son if i don't have a girlfriend that's mean allah he is not the almighty god how mary she can have a son she don't have a boyfriend oh because the god of mary is the almighty god but the god of islam he questioned his ability saying to himself how i can have a son if i don't have a girlfriend you see he didn't say i don't have a son no he's saying how can i how can he is questioning the ability how can i have a son if i don't have a girlfriend he is not saying i don't have a son only he's saying how i can i don't have a girlfriend and then in this verse he is presenting the reason for us how he can have a son and this is why the sunni he will not read it he if you want to have a son if allah won't have a son he will not marry from mary he will not marry someone from the earth he will marry from the black eyed women he will have sex with them and he will have a baby and he will call him isa the mic is yours sunni Okay, I like how you insist on moving away from the subject of the Trinity to the great uh, Quran. I want to go back to the subject of the Trinity. I, I know it's tough for you, but I'm, I'm going to please try. Yeah? With this special relationship, this spiritual relationship. I answered you. I'm speaking about the Bible for the last 20 minutes. And now I did not answer you. How come you don't want to read for me the verse I'm quoting for you? Are you, are you ashamed of it? How Allah is going to have sex with the black-eyed women? Why you keep ignoring it? What's the problem? Say it. Say I'm ashamed of it. Take the mic and read for me, please. How Allah He say, if I want to have a partner, I will have a partner with ourselves. Let me make the question for you clear. Take a note, please. That somebody, somebody write the question for me. Muslims are slow. Question number one: When Allah He says ourself, who is ourself? He will take partner from ourselves. So who ourself? Is Allah is one or there's many? Number two, Allah says ourself mean the black eyed women and the angels. Number three, Allah to have a son, he is going to have sex with those two angels or black eyed women. How this will happen? How Allah will make a woman pregnant by having sex with her? And if you don't answer, obviously you are ashamed. Your mind. So this is a very common tactic. You had asked me actually about Allah Al-Uzza before, and I answered you, thinking that khalas, we'll go back to the Trinity, and now you're, uh, and, more, and I answer this, you'll give me 10 more. No, we go to the Trinity, I'm sorry, because don't be ashamed of the... Abdul, I answered you. I answered you. I said Jesus is the Word of God who sent down to Mary. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. You are the one who asked me, what the difference between you and Jesus? You are called a child of God. You are called son of God. How are the different? I told you, Jesus is exist before his birth. I am not. I told you, I am praying to my father for he is my provider, my protector. Jesus is not the same as me. Now I demand you to answer, you coward. You are ashamed of your God having sexual relationship with the black-eyed women, which means he did lie to you. He said to you, you go to heaven, you will find virgins. But obviously, they are not virgins. Allah is having sex with them already. Allah is cheating. Allah, was, Allah right now is sleeping with all those women, doing bing, 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 huh? dahman, dahman. And before you arrive, he will put his finger between their legs and he will make them virgins again. This is why you don't want to answer. The mic is yours. Why Allah and how? He called himself ourself, and he is going to have sex with ourself, and that ourself is a black eyed woman and the angels. And then he will have sex by having sex with ourself. He will have a kid by having. Have you ever guys, somebody having sex with himself and having kids? I do. 
Do you remember the story of Muhammad saying that shaitan he lay eggs, 10 eggs a day? You remember? Muhammad he said, they asked him how shaitan he can have zuriya. The Quran says zuriya tahu. They have children. He said, Shait Allah he created for shaitan for the first Iblis, a penis in the right leg and a vagina in the left leg. So he want to have sex with himself, he shake his legs and that will enter into that. And then at the end of the day, he laid 10 eggs and every egg have 70 shaitan. Look like your Allah is the same. Otherwise, how he will have sex with himself? Is he the same as the black black eyed woman? Is Allah is a woman or is a male? All what we are asking for is explanation and you are running away from the answer. So here we go. This is the verse again, and this is the interpretation, and this is the link for those who are seeking reference, so nobody will say I'm making things up, and the mic is yours. Let us see if you will do it again. Go ahead. So my follow-up question for the Trinity is if this special relationship between God and, and Jesus, is this special relationship? Coward, you will not answer, right? Answer it and then go to your topic, continue, answer it. Potato, why you are not answering? Just answering, I'm repeating that myself, shame on you. Honestly, shame on you, you're not, you're, you are not a man. Are you ashamed of your God? You are proving, you are proving my point. Guys, isn't it obvious that this guy is ashamed? We are talking about the Trinity. We are talking about the Trinity. I'm proving that you Muslims believe in the Trinity, not us. That our Trinity is not the same as yours. Our Trinity is believing in one God. You Muslims believe in Trinity. Allah is us. We are talking about the Trinity. And you are a coward. And you don't want to answer it because you have no answer. The mic is yours. I insist you coward. You have to read it and you have to answer it. And then say whatever you want. You might. Okay, so as I said, I'm I'm going to I'm not going to uh, do this. I'm going to ask about the trinity because my original Why you don't want to do this? Why? We just to prove that your God Allah is not one and he is us and he is going to have sex with himself like how Allah will have sex with himself he will round his penis in the wrong direction and he would do himself you have to explain you are full of shame and you are showered with shame and you have no idea how you can answer are you calling a friend are you calling a friend you prove nothing we Christian we believe in one God the first page of the, of the Bible says you worship your God alone. Correct, guys? Is that correct? The command, God gave command to Moses. You worship your God alone. That's it. We don't have three gods. But we discover that the Quran is the one who believes in many gods. Allah says ourself, if I want to have sex, if I want to have a partner, I will have a partner with ourself. Who is ourself? Who is ourself? If Allah is one, and guys, guys, in order to have sex with somebody, you have to be from the same kind of you, correct? Is that correct? If a man has sex with a donkey, he must be a perverted man. And donkey cannot give him boys, cannot give him kids. So when Allah, he says, if you want to have sex with the, he want to have sex with the black-eyed women, it means the black-eyed women must be the same as Allah, from his kind. And that explains ourselves. And this is why you are ashamed to answer. The mic is yours. You've been humiliated and your God is disposed. Your God is not one and he is many. There's many of Allah and he will have sex with his kind. Otherwise answer. The mic is yours. Okay. Since I just keep on red dotted, I will answer you. Okay? Uh, don't don't think I don't want to answer you. I actually like like this. You want to ask about the Quran, I'll answer you. Yeah? Okay, but we then go back to the Trinity afterwards. Ask me to read the verse. And then to explain the verse. Huh? Okay. 
لو أردنا أن نتخذ لهوا لاتخذناه من لدنا إن كنا فاعلين Okay, now what does this mean? If we wanted to yeah, if we wanted to take a what you call diversion lahwa uh, and they uh, 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 and uh, here it could be a wife or a son if you look at I'm read I mean, for example in tafsir al qurtubi there are different opinions as to what then is meant by diversion here law aradna an natakhid lahwa wal lahu al mar'ata bilugha al اليمن قال قتادة وقال عقبة I'm not gonna go into the whole سند but basically they say it could be a wife or it could be a a a a son طيب what about the rest لو أردنا أن نتخذ له ون لاتخذناه من لدنا إن كنا فاعلين we would have taken it from ourselves so what is ourselves again if you go to any book of تفسير I'm just reading from a random book of tafsir called Al-Qurtubi, it says uh, 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 that this refers to the Ahl al-Sama, the people of, uh, the, 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 for, for, for meaning someone better than you. It would have been more pure than you. It would have been like an angel. It would have been someone who who, who, who doesn't have impurities, who doesn't go to the toilet. It would have been, you understand? وَمَا كُدْ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes off by saying, إِن كُنَّا فَاعِلِينَ This is actually the opposite to what you think. It means we wouldn't have done it's like saying, and I, I know Christian Prince, you are an Arab, in Anta illa nadir. Yani, uh, 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 as Ibn Jarih uh, al Hassan said, Al ma'na ma kunna fa'ileen misil in Anta illa nadir. I, 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 uh, 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 yani, it's not gonna happen. It's just, uh, it's just like saying, what if? It's like, a, it's like you uh, use, uh, uh, it's a way of rhetoric and speaking to the Christian. And you will see this throughout the, the Quran, Aslan. And you know this. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, Jason, you are jumping the mic. Sonny, Sonny, thank you very much. Thank you very, 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 very much. Finally. Guys, did you hear him saying? Did you hear him saying? If Allah want to have a wife, the word lahwan in Arabic means women. Women. Allah saying, if I want to have a woman, I will have it from ourselves. He said, I don't know if I understand what he was saying, uh, Mr. Sunni, he said, ourselves mean the people of heaven. People of heaven. So if I want to have a wife or a woman to sleep with, I will take from one of the people of heaven. Who is in heaven? There's angels and black-eyed women. And what is that for? Is to have a son. And then at the end he said, he said, but Allah will never do so, according to him. All right? But Allah is saying, if I want to have a son, I will have sex with the women in the heaven. That's mean he can. It's possible if he want. Otherwise, why well, he mention it? But he have no desire. And look what it says in Arabic. You know, obviously your Arabic is very funny. In kunna fa'ilin. He didn't say, and we will not do it. He said, in kunna fa'ilin, if we will do it. If. He didn't say, we ne I'm nev I will never do it. He said, in kunna fa'ilin. Which means, if you wish to do it. So, what we learn now, that Allah, he consider us as people of heaven. Why? According to Mr. Sunni, Sunni because people of heaven... They are equal to Allah. Otherwise, why he call him us? Correct, guys? We are not from us to Allah. We are not. Who is us for Allah? Is him, the black-eyed women, and the angels. So the choice of Allah, if you want to have sex, a woman, he will have sex either with the black-eyed women or with the angels. That explains many things to us. Allah is not God. He is just a normal creature who have a penis. I'm not being rude, by the way. I'm just trying to explain the verse. And in order for him to have a son, he needs a woman. And this woman either is going to be from the black-eyed women or from the angels. But for the meantime, Allah don't have a desire for that yet. Maybe now he have a desire because this verse written 1400 years ago. 
Maybe Allah already have sex with a lot of them. We do not know. But he said, for now, if I want that, he didn't say, actually, I don't have a desire. He said, if, in Kunafari. So if we want to do that, this is who is going to be with, and those are our, our self. So who is now the one who believe in God and wife and son? It is not the Christians. It is the Muslims. And Allah himself saying, it is possible, if he wish, it is possible for him to take who? A woman. A woman. A human being as wife. And from that woman or an angel and from that woman after he sleep with her he will have a baby i wonder what he will call him the mic is yours sonny go ahead and thank you for answering finally okay. look christian prince i'm giving you here a chance to do you know the equivalent of christian dawah to me <coughs> educate me I'm, I'm not even like teaching you about about uh, like what you're ridiculously trying to do Teach you about your your own religion. I'm just asking you, like a passers a passerby. So, okay. Is I want to know this explore this relationship between the God and, and and the Son. Is it that the God is greater than the Son, which would be what we would logically think the God is greater than the Son, uh, or is it a, the equal, or is Jesus greater than the Son? Like I want to know. Which is greater? What is the exact relationship? Is the, does the son look up affectionately at the father, or does the father get uh, uh, usurped by the son? Is it possible to tell us the, the kind of the dynamic between this? Because you said it's a special relationship. It's different than than any other spiritual relationship between God and his his, his kids. So what is the different? Can you explore, please, this uh, this special relationship? I yield the mic. When Jesus he said that the Father is greater than me, for a very simple reason, for the word of God is taking the form of a humble man. This is why Jesus he called himself the Son of a Man. Is that correct, Christians? Do do Jesus call himself the Son of a Man? But he, he isn't the Son of, of no man. We Christian we don't believe that Jesus is the Son of no man. Even the Quran confirmed that. So he called himself Son of Man. Why? For the word of God humble itself and come to you as a man however the word of god is obedience to god for the word of god is god himself now if we ask the same question for the muslims is the word of god is the quran is the word of allah is allah they will say no and i will prove it to you sunni is the word of allah is allah or it is second person is the word of Allah created by Allah or it's not a created the mic is used go ahead okay so first of all thank you for answering that you actually raised some very very important stuff so you said when Jesus the man came or was born in that moment Jesus Sunni, the same as I answer you, you need to answer me. Learn, please. Learn how to behave. I answered you, you answer my question, and then you make uh, comments as much as you want about what I say. I said, is the word of Allah created or not? Guys, did I ask the question? He's trying always. When he take the mic, he don't want to answer. Is the word of Allah created or not? Answer and say whatever you want about it, you know. Is it the same as Allah? Is the word of Allah is Allah? Is it the created? And then tell me what do you think about what I said and respond to me. And then give me the mic back. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I will answer you, but I just want to again point out you're diverting again from the Trinity. Um, Kalamullah. Allah, as in the Quran, is not created. Allah is not created. It's divine, like a Allah. And Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the, uh, commands. For example, uh, uh, he commanded his prophet to do certain things, like to marry more than four wives, for example. I know that's probably like sparked crystal bells in your head, but marry more than four wives, for example. 
This is the action of the Prophet. And the Prophet is, you can't say the Prophet, the Prophet was created, he's not divine. But the command comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the speech of Allah, so if we say the word of Allah, meaning the speech of Allah, then that's, that's not created. But the way Allah commands and the way Allah manages the universe is he has laws and he has agents to do, like angels to send down the revelation and so on and so forth. The, the, these are all created beings. Does that now make more sense? Now, can I please ask the question about the Trinity? Is the flesh, is the man that is the flesh, is he, is he in that moment, from what I, I, I understood from you, is he inferior to God? But if, but Jesus that was not born, that the kind of like the spiritual version of Jesus, because I don't understand when he was born, was there only one Jesus or was it two Jesus? The Jesus that is what you would say eternal, spiritual, and the Jesus that is in the flesh. Because if it's one Jesus, you're in a big, you're in big trouble. Because you just said the flesh Jesus is inferior. So in that moment, or in that period when Jesus was alive on earth, he was in that part of the tr Trinity disintegrated and it became inferior. And if you say, no, there was two Jesuses, now you enter into matrix land. So which one is it, Christian? All right. I will answer you and then I will make a comment and I want to say thank you for what you said. Uh, guys, when when the Muslim ask us, is Jesus is exists before, is exists after, uh, he is a new Jesus, second Jesus, first Jesus, obviously they are not listening. When Jesus said before Abraham I am, that means his existence has nothing to do with his birth. And the birth is just a form of a man. He took a form of a man. That's it. That is the word of God who became a man. But the word of God is eternal. The difference between us and the Muslims is the following. We just heard Mr. Sunni saying that the word of Allah is divine and not created. Guys, did he say that? Did he say that? Everybody heard him. And the word of Allah is not Allah. So now we have two divine. We have two divine. We have Allah, uncreated, and he is divine. And we have the words of Allah is uncreated and it's divine. When we say uncreated, it means it exists by itself. Is that correct? Is that correct, guys? It means I do not need to be created. I exist since, er, like, before the time. I'm eternal. And now the Muslims, they have a problem. The Christians, he's asking us about Jesus. He was exist first Jesus, second Jesus, third Jesus. We don't have such a thing because simply the word of God is always the word of God. The word of God appeared to us, came to us as a man. That is not the second Jesus. That is not the third. That is the word of God. The word of God can come and have the power and have the ability of mighty God were to come to us in any way it want. That is not the second Jesus or third Jesus. Now, after we heard it from Sunni saying that the word of God is divine and it is not the created, so now we have two gods in Islam. And that ex exposed the Muslims speaking about monotheism. Because if you are worshipping one God, how you accept that God and his words are not one? How you accept that you have two divine and one God? But you have two divine. How many of you heard him saying that the word of God is divine? Did he say that? Did he say that? What divine means, Sonny? Do you know what divine means? Divine means God. <laughs> divine is God. You do not use the word divine with someone is not God. Is that correct, people? When we say divine, we are talking about what? What divine in English mean? Somebody give me a definition of divine. Somebody go to the, the dictionary right now and copy for us a divine.
It is the one who no one like him. He is the one he is eternal. He is the one to worship. He is the one. It is it is a religious term of worshiping. All right? So now we have a three, we have two divine. Guess what? The Muslim have a third divine. If we ask Mr. Sunni, is your God Allah and his knowledge is one? Is the knowledge of Allah as a created? He will say the same as he said about the word of Allah. He will say, the knowledge of Allah is not a created and it is divine and the knowledge is not Allah. So now we have a three. We have the word of Allah is divine. And the word of Allah, by the way, is not created by Allah, which means when we say the word of Allah, it does not mean that this is a word coming from Allah. No, maybe Allah is reading them only. Because obviously it exists by itself. It is not created. Allah has nothing to do with the existence of this word. It exists. Same as Allah exists. And maybe even before, we do not know. What we know, that the, the word of Allah is spoken by Allah, but obviously it is not his word, for he is not the one who created the word. Especially the Muslims believe, as we heard him saying, there's two kinds of words, speech and command, as if the command is not a speech, which is very funny, because when I make command, I'm speaking, and that is a speech. And that is very funny of you to say, there's two kinds of words of, of God. There's a command and there is a speech. If you are saying to me the command is created and the speech is not created, that will mean we have another problem. Why? Because now we have a created word of Allah and we have any created word of Allah. <laughs> Let us not to make it complicated. Mr. Sunni, the knowledge of Allah is not Allah, and it is divine. The word of Allah is not Allah, and it is divine and eternal and never created. So now we have three and a created divine. How you convince me that you have one God, your mind? Before I go back to the important topic uh, at hand, the Trinity, uh, I'm going to quickly answer or clarify what was said, what I said. All the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his mercy, his justice, his speech, and so on and so forth, his hand, his face, all the uh, names and uh, the attributes and, uh, and characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are all part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not different gods, they're not something else, they are part of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indiv indivisible. He is one, indivisible. Not one made up of parts, but one indivisible. These are attributes of the one true uh, eternal God. Now I, I turn attention to the important, important topic of of the Trinity. Are you still not really answering me? Is the flesh, the human, the flesh, is he gr uh, greater? You said he's, sorry, you said he's inferior. So in the moment when Jesus was born until he, you say he was crucified, that moment Jesus was inferior. Or was there another Jesus that was eternal and this Jesus was inferior? And related to the discussion when Jesus suffered, you know, like when someone punched him or, you know, stabbed a spear, a spear through his belly. Uh, when Jesus uh, felt pain, was that the eternal Jesus feeling pain or is that the man Jesus feeling pain? And how much of Jesus that you people saw that, you know, Matthew, John, and Paul saw, how much was it the eternal Jesus and how much was it the man Jesus in his characteristics and, 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 and so on and so forth? Did you see the question? Yeah? I yield the mic. All right, guys. We heard Mr. Sunni saying, Allah have hands, Allah have legs, Allah have face, and those are the parts of Allah, correct? We heard them saying that. So the Muslims ad admit that Allah is a physical being. He have hands, he have parts, he have shoulders, he have neck, he have eyes, he have face, he have lips, he have ears, and even he got bored. That physical being is accepted, but Jesus, the physical being, is rejected. 
And that is shown as the hypocrisy of the Muslims. Because your God, Allah, the physical being, he has feeling and he has emotion. And I can show you tons of verses and hadith. That he have the same emotion of a man. And as long as you admit yourself without me giving me hard time, that your God is a physical being, he have hands and parts. Which part? Is Allah part? Allah is Allah hand is Allah? Which part of Allah we are talking about? Is Allah one part or many parts? According to you, parts. You are the one who used the term part, not me. Everybody heard you saying that. So this united part will make Allah. The united part together will make Allah. So Allah is like an, uh, uh, a, a robot, robot and you know we put the parts together and we make Allah. But yet you did not answer about how the word of God can be exist without God. And you say that the attribute of Allah are divine too. That is very funny. Because the attribute of Allah, all of them, they are attribute of a man. As an example, Allah is a believer. That is an attribute of a man. Allah is a revenger. He is muntaqim. He takes revenge. That is an attribute. All the attribute of the man is exist in the attribute of Allah. Additional to this, you mentioned that Allah have hands. Muhammad, he said, Allah have five fingers in every hand. Uh, he have uh, two hands. He have two feet. He have a leg. And actually, Allah will come today in the, in the judgment day in, in a shape different from the Muslim they know. So now, if we go to this story, uh, let, let, me, let me first answer you about, before we go to this one, about Jesus being uh, uh, inferior and whatever he's saying. Guys, how many times I said, that God, he come in a shape he like, in the form he like. That will not change him. As an example, just to show you the hypocrisy of the Muslims. If, if Jesus come as a man, that will make him second Jesus. That means when the angel Jibreel, according to Muslim, it is the Holy Spirit. Chapter 19, verse number 17, it says, Allah, he sent down to Mary his spirit and appeared to her as a perfect man, Basharan Sawiyah. If we ask him now, is that second Jibreel or this is the same Jibreel, he will say the same. The spirit of Allah became a man. Is that a second spirit or the same spirit? He will say it's the same. So how come you can't understand that God, he came to us in a form of a man? And why you think that will make him second one? And when you speak about pain, that's very funny, very, 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 very weird. Because uh, we as a Christian, we believe that when Jesus, he took the form of a man, he is a man. At the same time, he has the power of God, for he is the word of God. Which means he can be tortured, he can be killed, he can be hurt. He, he can, but those things have no power over him. As an example, it's not a secret that we Christians believe that they crucified Jesus, and they killed the body of Jesus, but the word of God show its power by coming back to life. Which means nobody have power over the word of God. For it is divine, almighty God power. Not like the word of God in Islam. As an example, we heard Mr. Sunni saying that the word of God in Islam is divine. It is eternal. It is not created. But all those things will not make it holy. How we know that? If the Quran or if the word of God is holy, that holy should not teach bad ethic. That's number one. If the word of God is holy and it's from the Almighty and it is eternal and not created, it must be superpower. But the Quran confirmed that it is not. It has even a lack of knowledge. As an example, the Quran says, that women have a sperm coming from their ribs and men they have a sperm coming from that backbone so who is the one here making the such a mistake is it the word of allah or it is allah or it is his knowledge you have to admit that one of them made a mistake because women have no sperm coming from their ribs whoever 
person you choose, if you choose the person Allah is the one who made the mistake, or you choose the word of God is the one who made mistake, or you choose the knowledge of Allah not to be a good knowledge, you just destroyed your God. For there is no way the Almighty God can be wrong in such a silly thing. In the same time, Jesus, when he came in the flesh of a man, so what? The one who was suffering is, is, the, is the man, normal. That's normal. This is why Jesus, he said, my father is a greater than me. And I said that to you from the beginning. The first second you took the mic, I said to you, Jesus said, my father is greater than me. Why? For he is humbling himself, coming to, to, to you as a man. So that will not downgrade the value of Jesus. Still, Jesus, when he is a man, he can say to the dead man, raised from the grave. Is that correct, Christians? Even Muslims believe in that. Jesus, the man who is you making fun of his flesh, with his flesh, he can still command the death. He is not commanding the dead. He is commanding death. He is overcoming the death. He is victorious over death. So how you say that Jesus is suffering and that will not make him equal and he is not good to go and he is not good to be God anyway. But yet you admit in your Quran that Jesus can heal the blind, which means he create eyes for him. Obviously you have a damage in the eye and maybe the nerves in order to fix it without medicine. And that's impossible by saying a word. It's mean your command is the command of the almighty God. So Jesus is, when he speak, he's speaking the word of God, which is the command of God, which is the word of God. And this is why he has the authority. It is not the man. For us as a Christian, we don't worship the man. We worship the word of God. We don't believe in a man. We don't. And we don't follow a man. We don't. So when Jesus said, by me and for me, everything is created. That explains who is he. By him. You see, the Muslims, when they say the command of Allah, they, they, they laugh at themselves. If I ask Mr. Sunni right now, show me one thing from the command Allah come to be true. Just one. And I will give you the coming 10 years to prove it. You will not be able. As an example, the Quran says, if Allah wants something to say to be, he say be. And he compared between Jesus and uh, Adam. But this is very funny and very stupid. Why? Because Allah did not create Adam by saying be. Allah made mud and he, he fashioned the mud. In a shape of a man, he made his eyes, his hair, his legs, his private part. And then after he finished the statues, he breathed into it. And then, according to the Quran, uh, 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 Adam, he rushed to, to, to jump, but he could not. So he said to Allah, finish me fast before the sun set. That is not God. I thought God, if you want something to happen, according to Muhammad, Comparing between him and Adam and Isa and Adam, say if Allah wants something to happen, he say be. But Allah failed to create one thing by the word be, which means the word of Allah is not what the Muslim they claim. It is divine. It is not the word of Almighty, and the proof it has no power. In the same time. Jesus, he proved that he is the word of God. How? When he said to the dead man, raised from the grave, he rose. That is the word of God. When Jesus said to the blind man, see, he saw. That is the power of God. Even the Quran says that Jesus can tell you what you hide in your house. That is the knowledge of God. To know the unseen. And the funny, the Quran confirmed, nobody knows the unseen, save God. That must be Jesus. 
Even in the Bible, Jesus can read your mind. Is that correct, guys? Is it true that the Bible says that Jesus can read the mind of people before even they say and they talk? Is it true that Jesus, he told the one who will be, he, he will deliver him, the one who is going to deliver him to the, to the, to the, to the soldiers before he did that? He know the future. And yet, Allah know nothing. Allah told the Muslims that 10 of you can fight 100. When the Muslim went to war, they lost. So Allah, he said, oh, now Allah, he knows that you have weakness on you. So he's going to enlighten your task. And that is Allah. Let us hear what uh, Sunni want to say. Sunni, if you can speak louder because I'm going to get some tea so I can hear you when I am in the kitchen, please. Go ahead. Okay, Meshi. Okay. So uh, three things. The first thing is about, just to finish the topic about the uh, the um, attributes of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like his hearing, like his sight, like his mercy and so on. These attributes are all real. They are all from Allah. But they are nothing like us. They are nothing like us. Nothing is like unto him. And he is the all seeing, all hearing. Regarding the, uh, uh, just also, um, you asked me, has Allah said a command that has ever happened? Or has he, uh, or the Quran? Uh, I can give you one from the Quran and one from the Hadith. And then I can talk to you about the Trinity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the chapter of the Romans, Alif Lam Mim, Ghulibat al Rum. في أدنى الأرض وهم من بعد غلبهم سيغلبون ألف لام ميم the Romans have been defeated in the lowest part of the uh, earth uh, in, in Jordan lowest part of the earth and then after their defeat they will uh, uh, they will be victorious في بضع سنين only in a few years and this happened a few years later the Romans defeated uh, the Persians um, uh, in terms of the uh, hadith so many of them but لا تفتحن القسطنطينية ونعم الأمير أميرها ونعم الجيش جيشها. You will enter Constantinople, and blessed is the or great is the leader, its commander, and great is its army. So the, the opening of Constantinople uh, was, was also mentioned. Okay, regarding the Trinity, here I, and I hope you can hear me, uh, um, uh, 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 Christian Prince. You just mentioned something very dangerous for Christian theology. Very dangerous. You said in one condition, you said, Jesus, uh, 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 the man on earth, Jesus, the man on earth, when he said the Father is greater than I, it's because he was a man. He was a man. Uh, but uh, then you said, no, but then Jesus said, I know, uh, or Jesus then knows the unseen, knows, not the unseen, but knows people's hearts. He does this and he does that, and therefore he's divine. This is a big contradiction. Is the Jesus who said the Father is greater than I, because he was the same Jesus, the same man who cured the leper, uh, leprosy and so on, was he divine as, or not? You will say to me, no, he's just a man. He suffered. He was the Father is greater than I. So how can Jesus say the Father is greater than I and be, and I agree with you, he, he is uh, inferior to God. He is just uh, a man at this moment and uh, every moment but then at the same time you say to me no 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 but jesus also and then you quote another part of the gospel which one is it you cannot have both because uh, the same jesus who said the father is greater than i the same man the same flesh and bones oh, uh, then you say no no but he's also the divine and he also uh, knew what people were thinking in their hearts and so on you cannot have both this is the heart of uh, contradiction you can't get more contradiction than this if you try it yeah you cannot be the son of man and the son of God in the same person because you can, then it's a contradiction. How would I know if you give me a biblical verse that I'm talking about the man or the God? Uh, well, the father is greater than I. How do I know that's, uh, what's your evidence, Aslan, that he it was the son of man, that he was the man and not the God? And when the, Jesus cured the leprosy, why, why can't we just say he's the son of man? He's the son of man who, by the will of God, he, he, he cured the leprosy. Just like uh, Moses, who was a, a man, he cured the, uh, 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 he split the sea and he defeated Pharaoh by the will of God. Why can't we say, do you, do you see? We, you know, at least be honest and say, we don't know. If I don't mind if you say, we don't know that Jesus 
when he suffered, he was a man, or is he God? I don't know. Just say you don't know. Uh, you know, just say it's a mystery. It's one of the unseen mysteries. But don't pretend that you have a logical, coherent answer for it. Yeah. Uh, either you say the person who was born from Mary's, uh, you know, uh, he was born from Mary's womb. That person is just a man, and then he's re uh, he's a metaphysical representation of an eternal Mishafei Jesus. Blah blah blah. Or you can say no, he is actually. Uh, 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 the son of God and the, our God suffers. Our God goes, eats, drinks, suffers, blah, 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 blah. Which one is it? Okay. I hope, please, you answer my question, uh, Christian Prince. I know it's hard, getting now a bit tougher, but I hope you can answer. Oh, it's getting very tough. Uh, first of all, he said that his prophet knows the future, right? And he gave many prophecies. And he mentioned that he would occupy the Constantinia. But your prophet never said, it is you who will occupy the Constantinians as the Turkish. Actually, your prophet, he hated the Turkish. The one who occupied the Constantinia were not what your prophet was talking about. Your prophet, he mentioned actually, that you, you will not get old. If somebody had the hate guys posted, he was saying to a group of people in front of him that this person will not get old before the judgment day come. And that to prove that your prophet is a false prophet. He made a false prophecy about being victorious in Constantinia, but it's not you as Turkish. It is you as people of Quraysh. Now look at guys, let, let us see what Muhammad said about the Turkish. He hated them to death. Actually, Muhammad, he considered the people of Gog and Magog, they are the Turkish. Open the Hadith and, and, and love. So your prophet, he believed that judgment day will not come until you fight the Turkish and you kill them. Not, not you will convert them to Islam. And then the Turkish is talking about is those who will come. And look how he, he make fun of their, their, their face. Guys, somebody post for me what he says about, about the Turkish. Let me show you. I uh, will pause the hadith. You know, you just go. You guys, you can pause from the hadith as much as you want. He is describing the Turkish in a very funny way. Here we go. Somebody is posting it. And obviously, he hates them. And he's making fun of them. Actually, if you read my book, The Deception of Allah, you will see how Muhammad, he speak about the Turkish, that those are people of Gog and Magog, and they are the one who is going to defeat the Muslims in the beginning, but then they will be defeated. All right? And this is being in the judgment day, not now, not 600 years ago. And the one who is going to take Constantinia, it's never been the Turkish. However, if you go in the Quran, in chapter 60, chapter of Al-Anfal, verse number 65 and 66, you will see how Allah, he promised the Muslims victory, and then they lost. And he said that one of you can fight 10, and 10 can fight 100, and then they went to the war, and they lost. And then he said, oh, Allah, he found a weakness in you, so he will enlighten your task. All right? Now, wait, let us continue. About Jesus being in the flesh. Jesus is being in the flesh. And how Jesus can be in the flesh, but yet he can be uh, God, how he can be divine, how he can be born of a woman and he is divine and he's holy. Chapter 19, verse number 19 in the Quran says, Allah, he said to Mary, I will give to thee the gift of a holy son. So the birth of Jesus in the human form which is a humble way of the word of God to come to us, still did not make Jesus not holy, even in the book of the devil, which is the Quran. To the point Allah himself is calling Jesus holy son, but yet he is born with the flesh. And that contradict what Muhammad he said. Muhammad he said, Adam in Every son of an Adam is a sinner. 
Every son of an Adam is a sinner. But Jesus is not. He's holy. Now here the Muslim, he will have himself in, under, under a bad dilemma. How Jesus can be unholy for he is being a man and he is holy in the same time when he is born as a man in the Quran. The whole point Mr. Sunni is trying to, Sunni, trying to say to us, how Jesus can be God if he is just in a form of a man, in a form of a human being? That cannot happen. But he just admitted that his God, Allah, he have a form. We do not know what, what is that exactly. But according to the Quran, according to the Hadith of Muhammad, Allah is a man. And we can prove that from the following Hadith. Allah is a short man the curly hair he have exactly the same look as the false messiah who will come to the earth he will claim to be the messiah but the only difference between them and the false messiah is the eye the right eye here we go now he posed the hadith let me pause the link guys yeah, this is the link everybody open so according to islam allah is a man so now I want to return the question to Mr. Sonny. How Allah is a man, he has the feature of a man, he has the look of a man, he has the shape of a man, and the only difference between him and the false messiah, which is a man, is just the right eye. That's it. All the questions you gave to me, I want you to ask it about your God. How your God can be God and he is a man. He have he have a full look and attribute of a man, and the one is describing him is Muhammad. It's not me. I'm not the one is saying that Allah is a man. It's your prophet. And the, you know he's saying, don't be confused. Let, let me pause the, the hadith for you again. He said, don't be confused. Allah is not one eye. So the Muslims are going to face a confusion. And what is the confusion? It's between Allah and the Antichrist, the Dajjal. And what is that? They look exactly the same. Both are a human. Because remember, the false Messiah, he will claim to be the Messiah. He will come as a man. Both have hands and arms, have the same exact form of a man. The only difference is the eye of Allah is different from the eye, the right eye only. The right eye of the false Messiah is damaged. The right eye of Allah, it's not damaged. So Allah is a man. So for us as a Christian, when we say that the word of God is born as a man, that does not affect the word of God. The word of God always holy. So when you say to me, Jesus was a child, that is the flesh is growing as a man. But that does not mean that the word of God does not exist before the birth of Jesus, as we said to you before many times. In the beginning, it was the word. And the word was with God, and the word is God. John chapter 1, verse number 1. So for us as a Christian, we don't have a problem for Jesus to be the word of God and to appear as a man. Actually, the, the, the Old Testament clearly make it clear for us that God, he came to Abraham as a man. Is that correct, guys? Is that correct? That God, he came to Abraham as a man? So God, he can come anytime as a man, not... This is not the first time God appeared as a man in the form of Jesus. That's not the first time. And even in the Quran, it says that the spirit of Allah appeared to Mary as a man. The Muslim, they say that this is Jibreel, but there is no proof. The whole Quran, you will not find one place it says that the Holy Spirit is Jibreel. Not even once. That is a fabrication of the Muslims. So now, Mr. Sunni, he left. Did he go? Am I heard, guys? Okay, Sunni. So how your God have the same look as a man, but you just said to us, yes, Allah have an attribute of a man. He have a, a hand, he have a, an arm, he have a face, but he don't like man. He don't, he don't look like men. But your prophet have different opinion that your God Allah is exactly a man. 
And that explains why Allah in that verse we asked you to read before, he's saying that Allah, if you want to have sex, you will have sex with the black eyed woman. Your mic is yours. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, I will answer you about the, the child antichrist question, but again, I, I don't appreciate that you didn't answer my question in really? sufficient depth. But first, let me answer the antichrist question. So I, as I mentioned, you may have gone to get the, your tea or whatever, but uh, I, I mentioned quite clearly that his attributes, basic and his uh, um, uh, 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 that Allah's, uh, his attributes are not like our attributes. His hand is not like our hand. You cannot imagine it. If you, if you can imagine it, then it's not. But belongs to the divine. Uh, his mer just like his mercy is not like our mercy, and and so on and so forth. Now, regarding the antichrist, which all Christians will fall for this, which is when this antichrist comes, he's going to perform many many things that will appear miraculous. He will um, again do the leper, uh, cure the leper, read people. He appear to read people's now all that kind of stuff that you guys have fallen for, and you will think it's divine. So a lot of most of humanity is going to fall for this person. It's going to be very irresistible to uh, to not uh, fall for him. He's going to do like, for example, he'll pass by a village, and if that he will tell the village, "Believe in me, I am God," and if the village don't doesn't believe in him, the, the village or city will will uh, undergo starvation. They will literally all their crops will die, and vice versa. If the village believes in him, they will uh, uh, they will be prosperous. So it will appear to people that this guy can command the universe, the, the clouds, and so on and so on and so forth. So the Prophet, uh, uh, peace and praises be upon him, is telling them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is telling him that in Al Basa Alaykum, if this matter becomes confusing for you, he's giving them a shortcut. You don't have time in this cr crazy moment if he was to appear to di to to, to di go into deep theological to Google this issue to read about this issue in detail. If in al basa alaykum fa'alamu anna rabbakum laysa bi'awa. He he is pointing a very important thing. Know that your Lord is not one eye. Meaning, look at the person in front of you. If he claims to be divine, why can't he cure himself? Why can't he why can't he fix his eye impairment? Because he's gonna ha he's gonna be blind in one eye. Why can't you fix it? Yeah. Now I go back to the again the important issue of uh, the Trinity. I had asked some very important uh, uh, questions about the Trinity, and they were, to be honest, partly answered, but largely unanswered. You you're being very vague in your answer. Like I'm gonna say the answer maybe in a different the question in a different way, which is, look, when Jesus said, "I uh, the Father is greater than I," my understanding is that here the person speaking right now in that split mini second, uh, the person saying the father is greater than I, he is the man. This is the man, the not divine. He is the inferior, the person who suffers, the person who drinks, the person, uh, sorry, the person who, yeah, drinks and eats, goes to the toilet, as in the, you know, just the, the man, the man just like us. Yeah. But at the same time, at the same time, later on, you you then said, no, 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 but, but he's, he's not the man. He, he's a divine. He can read people's minds. So I, I'm asking you, how can you be the same person? And you, okay, even if you can be, let, let's go with your argument that you can be the, both man and divine. At, how do I know when I read the gospel, or what, how do I know when I when I look at Jesus's life that at any moment, at any split second, I am dealing with the man who is Jesus or the eternal uh, Jesus, the spiritual Jesus? Like, which is it? Like, because once I spoke. Christian and in the beginning, 0% man, and then 50%, 50%, and then 75%, 25%. So can you give us your interpretation of what percentage of the man that we know as the historical Jesus, is, is he 50% man, 50% spiritual, is, uh, you understand? Well, this is very important, by the way. You think I'm making fun, but when, when you say Jesus died on the cross, at that moment, if he was Jesus, the spiritual Jesus, that means the Trinity is now two thirds. It's not one, it's 0.75. You see, you know, I said, okay, so if, when he dies, that means now it's 0 0.75. If he doesn't, do you understand? So is it just a metaphorical representation? Was there like another Jesus up there in heaven? And this was just someone who like represented him. Do you understand? If you, the problem is you're just so fixated on, on trying to talk about the Islam in a negative way. When all you had, if, you know, if someone asked me about Islam in such great detail, I'll be happy to sit with them and very patiently answer them. 
And you don't seem to want to spread even talk. You're not even proud of your own trinity. Oh, you don't know. You can, you know, I would respect you more if you said to me, I don't know. This is an unseen. This is a. Yeah, you are repeating yourself now. Let us go again. Guys, did I say to him many times just to prove that you didn't listen? Did I say that Jesus is ex the, the one we say Jesus is the, in the cross? When we say Jesus is born as a man, did we say that Jesus said before Abraham I am? How many times I need to repeat it? Which means the death of Jesus will not affect the Trinity. For he exists before the birth of a man. It's just a form. And it's very silly of you that I'm talking to you as an adult, but you are not listening. Before Abraham, I am. Do you know what the difference between Abraham and the birth of Jesus? So he is exist before Abraham, I am. So when they crucified Jesus, they did not destroy the Trinity. And there's nothing that's called 75 and 66 and whatever you are saying. This is very funny, but I understand you are copying and paste from a Muslim website. Now, guys, did this guy, he said, when we ask him about the Hadith, he said that Allah, yes, I have hands. Did he say that? Yes, Allah have hands. But his hand is not like us. Who care? When you say that he have hands, it means he have hands. And what hands for? What, guys, what hands is made for? To grab. That means Allah, in order to grab something, he needs a hand. If Allah is the Almighty, he say B is going to be. Why he need a hand anyway? Why Allah have a foot? We have foot. Jesus come to this earth because he took the look of a human being. So he walked between us using his feet. Yet he can walk in the water. See? Allah, he have a foot for what? He want to walk in the beach? Is he going to see the, the, the Muslims as a man? What you are admitting is that your God Allah have a form of a physical being. He have hands. He have feet. You see, we say a donkey have four legs. Why? Because he don't have feet. They don't have hands. What does that mean? It means he walking four. So what we understand that your God Allah walk the same as a human being. Is that correct, guys? When we say Allah have feet and have hands, it's mean he have hands, he have feet. Now, according to your prophet, Allah had two hands. And I can show you the hadith. So what we see very similar between them. Now, I show you the hadith, you said something very important and maybe many of you do not notice. Guys, when, when, uh, when we show them this hadith about his prophet saying, don't be confused Allah is not one eyed. What he said? Anyone remember what he said in the mic? Anyone remember? He said, Well, if this is the Messiah, how come he cannot heal himself? Correct? Did he say that? Or I'm making things up? Did he say that? If he is the Messiah, how come he cannot heal himself? Thank you very much. That is the Messiah. And you just admitted that the Messiah, if he is the Messiah, no, you said if he is, if you, you said if he is the Messiah. By the way, this is recorded. This is recorded. No, you said if this is the Messiah, people they can go back and they will see. You will see it. Just wait. If this is the Messiah, how come he can't heal himself? That means the Messiah, if he is, if he is the true Messiah, he can heal himself. And notice, Muhammad is comparing between who? Between the false Messiah and Allah. And there is something wrong here. Why? Because Muhammad should compare between the false Messiah and the true Messiah. Are you getting my point? Because the false Messiah is a claiming to be the false Messiah, claiming to be the Messiah. So why do they want to be confused with God? 
unless you are admitting that the Messiah is God. He should say in the Hadith, don't be confused between the false Messiah and the true Messiah. For the true Messiah is not like that. But yet what Muhammad he did, he fell in the trap of his own deception. And he said, your God, when you should say your Messiah, is not one eye. And we heard this guy saying that if this is the true Messiah, he can heal himself. How come he can be the Messiah? How come he claimed to be the Messiah, but yet he cannot heal himself? But yet Muhammad is comparing him with Allah. And this guy, he said, if it is Allah, he should be able to heal himself. So you are the one who is telling us and give us a proof that Allah must be the Messiah. Or in other word, God must be the Messiah. Now, you keep saying, I did not answer you, right? You keep saying, I did not answer you. And I'm not giving you a deep answer. I don't know what does that mean. Everything the Messiah he does is not by the power of a man. That is the power of God. Muslims, they say to us, there's prophets, they've been given miracles. Yes, they've been given miracles. But the Messiah, even in the Quran, says, I, I resurrect people from the death for you. I. And not only that, you will see the Quran say something extremely dangerous. If the Messiah is a man, he's just a man. Muhammad in the Quran, he says, I, I know nothing about Al Ghayb, which means I know nothing about the future. If I know about the future, I will take from it the good of it, a lot of it, which means if I know what will happen tomorrow, I will do the good, or, or let us say, I will grab the good of it. Muhammad, he admit he did not know the future. In the case of Jesus, Jesus, he said, I tell you what you hide in your homes. Mr. Sunni, he will say to us, well, this is the knowledge of Allah. Allah, he shared his knowledge with Jesus. How come Allah don't share his knowledge with anyone about knowing the future except Jesus? If we say to him how Jesus he can raise people from death, he will say to you, Allah he shared the ability of raising people from death with Jesus. But that means Jesus he can do what Allah can do. And Allah knows what Jesus knows, and Jesus knows what Allah knows. They know the future. If we ask him how the Quran say that Jesus can create from the mother bird, he will say to you, Allah, he gave him that uh, power. Allah gave him the power. But that means that Jesus now is sharing with God the ability of creation. Jesus, according to the Quran, is a creator. When you say to me the staff of Moses, that is not Moses making the staff a snake. Read the verses carefully. Even your Quran says that. It's not God giving Moses the ability. It is God making that staff in that look. It's not Moses. As an example, the cow chapter. The cow chapter, when 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 uh, a pure prophet of God, in this case Moses, he uh, a bunch of Jews they they complain about someone he killed someone, and Moses he want to know who is the one who killed that person, so what he did. He said, "Beat the guy with the beef, and he will come back to life, and he will tell you who is the one who killed him." It wasn't Moses. According to the story, it was Allah. But in chapter 4, verse number 171, it was Jesus saying, I, I heal the lepers. I tell you what you hide. I raise people from the grave. I create from the mud a bird, and I breathe into it. From the mud a bird, and I breathe into it, and make it alive. 
And then the Muslim, they will say to you, but this is by the leave of Allah. Thank you very much. I'm not going to question if this is true or not, because I can say all the miracles Jesus had them by my leave. I gave him the permission. But that won't change anything. It's a, it's a, it's a claim. What is confirmed is that Jesus, he can raise people from the grave. And he is saying, I. And that means Jesus, he shared, according to that verse, he shared the knowledge, he know the future, he know the unseen. Jesus, he can have power over death, which means he can resurrect, and he is the God of resurrection. And Jesus, he can create from the mud, the bird, exactly the same as Allah, he created in the Quran as he claimed. And Jesus right now is alive. When the Quran says every human being must die and stay in dust. So who is Jesus? If the Muslim, they want to say to us, let us ask this question to Mr. Sunni. Why Jesus was doing all these miracles? What is the purpose of them? What is the purpose? You will say, in order for you to believe. But obviously those miracles, they were too much to believe that those are done by just a man. It made us believe that Jesus is God. So even if the purpose is to make us believe that Jesus is just a man, those miracles, your God, Allah, he made a wrong decision. He made the Christians believe that Jesus is powerful as God. It was too miracle, too much miracles, too much powerful, too much amazing to just follow him as a man. Now we go back to the hadith. As long you said, your God Allah is not one-eyed, and your God, he is a reason for Muslim to be confused with the look of a man. And why they might be confused? Your God Allah is not one-eyed, for the other one is one-eyed. He didn't say there, how come he can't heal himself? That's your fabrication. And the proof of that, Allah cannot heal anyone. Uh, guys, do you remember the story of the guy who had a, uh, his brother, he had a pain in the stomach? Do you remember it? And Muhammad told him, go drink honey. The guy, he keep drinking honey, drinking honey, and then Muhammad, he gets so upset. He told him, your brother's stomach is lying, and Allah told the truth. Which means Muhammad, he claimed, when he gave an advice, that is an advice of God. Even when he said to someone, drink honey, he claimed that this is Allah talking. And that means Muhammad is claiming to be God. For it is not a man who is saying, go drink honey. It is Allah. Your mic, Sonny. Uh, okay, I'll briefly comment. Uh, thank you. I'll briefly comment about the uh, the miracle issue, and then I will um, go back to the important topic that we seem to want to love to avoid the Trinity. Uh, in terms of uh, look miracles, M Moses he, he split the sea. Not just Moses. You read your Bible. It's, read the Quran. It's full of miracles. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, forgive me. Show me where it says that he split the sea in your Quran or in my book. If you show me that, you are my hero. Is that fair, guys? Because you repeated this many times, and it's not true. Not in your book, not in my book. Obviously, you do not know your book, and you do not know my book. Otherwise, show me. Go ahead. Where it says that Moses, he split the seas. I want to see it. I want to learn from you. OK, confronted with the army of Pharaoh, Moses through the staff, and after throwing the staff, the, or pointing the staff, the sea was split. The point is, looking at any any observer looking at this, would, would come to the conclusion that Moses split the sea. But we know, you're right, by the way, Moses did not split the sea. It was Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who split the sea. Yes? Moses doesn't do anything. But by, by, it's only... A... Great, hold on. That's wonderful. So how do you explain to me Jesus in the Quran saying, I 
I create for you from the mud the bird and I breathe into it and give it life. I he didn't say Allah will create for you from the from the mud the bird. He didn't say Allah will raise for you from the grave a dead man. He didn't say Allah is going to heal the leper. He didn't say Allah will heal the blind. He didn't say Allah will tell you what you hide in your home. He said, I. How he can do that? I will answer you, but again, instead of breath me, I want to then move on to the second point, which is actually, uh, yeah. So, uh, first of all, if, if you continue the verse, reading the verse, Jesus, Prophet Jesus would also say, said by then, by the will of Allah. He, he's not doing anything from himself. He's, he's under the command of Allah. Anything that appears to be from him is actually from the will of Allah. It's, it's quite clear. It's like me, for example, uh, saying, I, you know, I, 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 I don't know, I, I did a business venture and, and I became rich. It's not because of my efforts. No, it's by the will of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides everything and does everything. Uh, this is this is a. I don't want to lose the point. Just wait, just wait, guys. If I get rich, I get rich because of the will of Allah. Did you hear it? But this is still you. You are claiming that Allah is the one who made you rich, but you have no proof. Do you have a proof? You have no proof. I can say right now, you have a computer because I allowed you to have one. I can make any claim I want. Do you have a proof that Allah? have anything to do with those miracles? If yes, how come Muhammad, he have zero miracles? How come Allah can give Moses the ability, as you say, it's Allah who split the, the, the sea for him, right? How come Jesus can do all those things, but Muhammad can do nothing? You're right. Okay, I think I, I've been quite clear in what I'm saying. I, I don't know why we're still talking about this topic. Just. It's so clear. Uh, 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 these things that we call miracles uh, are all by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's uh, 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 command. Uh, but we, what, what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants to do is to use the means. So, for example, uh, Moses he threw the staff. The staff itself, the stick or whatever the staff is, it's not itself the issue. It, that's not what split the sea. It's not like a chain bag. The staff, it's just the means. It's just. To show the people, look, uh, I'm throwing this up and look, the sea will split. Oh, it's a miracle. Uh, and Pharaoh's army uh, then gets drowned. The, but the uh, the person, uh, uh, the, the, the the power behind this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I want to go back to actually, before I go to the Trinity, is what you said, I am. You keep on saying I am. I said, I am is a, is a big thing. First of all, we don't know what I am is. I, I, I explain. If someone asks me a question and I say, I, like, for example, are you hungry? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Before you go there, you, you forgot to mention something. I ask you, how come Muhammad don't have miracles? Because you claim that the miracles Jesus did is from Allah. Correct, guys? Did he claim that? Did he claim that? That the miracles Jesus did is by the leave of Allah. I said to you, do you have a proof that this is by his leave? I can say right now, those miracles I gave to Jesus. Me, me. I gave it to Jesus. But do I have a proof? So, what is the proof that Allah is the one who gave the, Jesus the miracles, the ability to do those miracles? You might. Okay, I mean, uh, did Prophet Muhammad said, do miracles? He did many, many miracles. Uh, sure. That doesn't prove he's divine. For example, uh, even in the Quran, it's mentioned, uh, the hour has drawn near and the moon has been split. The splitting of the moon, which the... Thank you very much. God, did he say, Muhammad, he said, the hour is near and the moon is split. Did he say that? You heard it, right? That's me, Muhammad is a false prophet. First of all, nobody saw such a thing. Secondly, the hour did not come and the hour is not near. It was a false prophecy. When you say the hour is near and the moon is split, it means this is a sign of a judgment day. Do we agree, people? Muslim, Christians, everybody, atheists, do we agree? If somebody says to you the hour is near, near, that means it's it's there, and here we go. The moon is split. The moon is split. Allah Akbar. The, the hour is near, so it is a sign of a judgment day. It's not only is going to come; it is already there. And the proof: the moon is split. 
So your prophet, he made a false prophecy. Now let us say for the sake of argument, the moon is split, which is there no proof of such a thing. It's, it's very funny because if the moon is split, this means it became two parts. And if the moon became two parts, the earth will be destroyed. For at least one of them is going to hit the sides, the side is facing the earth. As simple as that. That's very, very naive to say. Now, let us say for the sake of argument, the moon is split. How we can know that even this is Allah who did it? I will make it simple for you. I'm watching the sky right now, and there is a the star is going to explode. Boom. I can say, I am the one who make it explode. Is that correct, guys? Muhammad is not reporting something will happen. He's reporting something happened already. <laughs> Supposedly. So if I see any kind of phenomena in, in the earth, I say hurricane. You see the hurricane was last week in Florida? I would say I am the one who made it. There is no proof. Give me one miracle Muhammad he did. You have zero. And the one you mentioned to me is a false prophecy. For he mentioned that judgment day is coming, but yet nothing happened. Your mind. Okay. And I, I, I object to the fact that we're moving away from the trench talk. But again, this is thing regarding the Iqtarabat al-Sa'a when Shaq al the the hour is near. It didn't say the hour is tomorrow or the hour is after tomorrow. The hour is near. I mean, if you if you think about the age of the U the Earth, which is a couple of billion uh, year, years old, I know the Christians are anti scientific; they don't believe that. And the universe is, is, is uh, I don't know how it's, what was it, forty billion or sixty billion year, years old. The hour being near, if it was in ten uh, ten years, a thousand years, even ten thousand years, it's still close. If you consider the age of even the age of humanity, and let, let alone the age of the Earth, let alone the age of the universe, so there's nothing it's getting closer that's what it's saying as for the the splitting of the moon you said oh no one saw it first of all a group of companions saw it and how many christians saw the virgin birth of jesus how many christians saw that no and other miracles included the uh, the, uh, the the multiplication of food multiple similar to as found with jesus the multiplication of water multiplication of water uh, water uh, uh, things like uh, uh, the plant that spoke, the uh, even the food. Sometimes, it would, uh, with, with, with the companions would hear it speaking. The expulsion. There was an apostate because of the Quran, and then he, when he died, the earth ex expelled him. In, in actual fact, even during the battles, there were in, in miracles and so on and so forth. So I'm, I want to go beyond the miracles because the miracles, no matter how many they are, or how big they are. We, does not prove the divinity of Prophet Muhammad. It does nothing to do with the divinity. He, these miracles are only happening by the will of Allah. And same with Jesus, same with Moses, same with Abraham. My question to you, though, is again, I want to go back to the, the important uh, Trinity, which is if, uh, 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 I mean, you, you use uh, uh, the word I am as if it's, that's it, Jesus is saying he's the Trinity. But this is just a, 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 like an incomplete sentence. It's like someone asking me, what have you eaten today and you, or uh, are you feeling well today and you say i am and then that's all you know i am or or mid-sentence i'm about to say i am a man and then you just walk off and you only hear i am it could mean anything i mean the christian the bible is bits and bobs and collected by different people we don't know who collected them so it doesn't prove anything it's an incomplete sentence that's all it shows the, the word i am just means your Bible is missing a few extra words. He could have said, I am going to sleep, I am hungry, I am thirsty. We just hear, I am. It doesn't mean anything. Now, uh, 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 my question to you, and uh, uh, please, please, I would appreciate you, you answer it, which is that is the, the, uh, the person who uh, suffered, on, uh, which you would say on the cross, when he, uh, when he said, uh, uh, oh God, why have you forsaken me? Is that Jesus the, the divine? Because he died for your sins, right? So he has to be Jesus the divine. Is that Jesus the divine denouncing the Trinity? Is he saying, look, this was a deal, you broke it, whatever, I don't want to be part of the Trinity anymore? And when Jesus bowed down and prayed like a Muslim, 
when he, he put his head down and did sujood and prayed like a Muslim. Uh, was this Jesus, the, uh, the the divine Jesus, admitting that he submits to the will of the eternal, the, the Father Jesus? Like, I, I just want to know, how can you possibly think that the man that you read in the Bible is anything but a slave and a servant and a humble, uh, uh, loyal prophet to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to God? He bowed down. He said, the Father is greater than I. He, he suffered. He was afraid. He, he ran away from, tried to run away from the Romans and then tried to fight the Romans to do holy war on the Romans. So, like, what, which part of, which part of the characteristics you see in the Bible is, is, yani, is, is, is divine? Okay, please answer that. I, I know you like to talk about Muslims and, and your misunderstandings of Islam, but please just give me the Christian dawah, man. Okay, guys, please don't put your hand up. I'm talking to this person. I don't want any to see any hand is up because if you take the mic, you will give him a chance to get away. Uh, listen to me. You said Jesus, he want to wage war against the Roman. That's one of the most funny things ever I heard. But I understand you are a Muslim who fabricates stories. Always Muslim, they come with their own fabrication and they create their own stories. Now, the funny you say, uh, Jesus, if Jesus is holy, and then he said, uh, my father is greater than me. And he was humble. And he's, even he said, why you forsake me? Guys, is it true that this is an old verse in the Old Testament and Jesus was quoting, which is about prophecy, about what will happen to him in the cross? But I understand you're a Muslim. You copy paste. You never read the, the Bible. You have no idea. Jesus was quoting the Old Testament where it says that the Messiah, when he come, they will crucify him. They will kill him. They will, they, will, they will divide his clothes. This is exactly what he said. So the prophecy is saying that this is what will happen. And Jesus reminding them about that prophecy that this is about him. Now you said something very funny. You said that when your prophet mentioned that judgment day is near, he didn't say, do you know how, how old is the earth? Guys, did he say that? Do you know how old the earth is? So it doesn't mean that this is about is going to happen now. Let us see what, what your prophet said in the hadith. I want everybody to open this link, please. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Open the link for me, Sunni. Your prophet said to a man, he had a group of people in front of him, and they asked him about the hour, the judgment hour, the last hour. He said, he looked around him, and he looked at the youngest between all the men. Just wait. Let us expose the false prophet. He looked at all the people around him, and he looked at the youngest between them. And he said, this man... Before he get old, the judgment day will come. Isn't it this is obvious? False prophecy, guys? Is that isn't it an obvious? You are the one who said that do you know how old the earth when the when the prophet he said judgment day is near? He is not saying uh, it is now. He is not saying next 10 years. It is, uh, you know, near, but it's going to be far. For God, it's nothing. But your God, he made a very clear statement that the judgment day is going to come before a person in the front of his eyes before he die. I mean, actually, before even he get old. And that is a clear false prophecy from a false prophet. Guys, is the, is the hadith clear? Is the hadith clear? Is the text of Muhammad clear? Muhammad prophesying that this man, this kid actually, he was a kid, in the front of him, before he get old, not before he die. Before this person get old. He said in Arabic, Lam yudrikuhu al-haram. Al-haram, you know, it's someone like he became, you know, he passed, let's say, 30, 30, 40, maybe. Before he arrived there, the judgment day is going to come.
And that is alone destroy all the false fiction of Islam about Muhammad is a prophet. And by the way, this is a Sahih Hadith. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> this is Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 2952. Uh, and if you go in English, it is book number 41, Hadith number 7050. So all your debate is destroyed by the false prophecy of your prophet who claim that judgment day is going to be before the end of the life of this person and even before he got older, but yet nothing happened. I do not need really actually to, to prove any more. I will give you a chance to answer me about this and then you give me the mic and I will answer you about the rest you said, your mic. I didn't, uh, sorry, I, I had to do some. I didn't really hear the last thing you said about the hadith, the man getting old. I, can you like post that or or uh, give me the reference for that? Uh, look, the, the point is. Sunni, I'm sure you heard it, but you are trying to find the time to, 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 to search Google. This is the hadith in the front of your eyes. Your prophet, he said, for a, for a young person in front of him, before this person, he became older, not old, not even 70 or 80. قَبْلَ أَنْ يُدْرِكُهُ لَهَرَمْ Which means before he, he, he arrived even to 30 or 40, the judgment day is going to come. So Muhammad predicting in his time, at least in the life of this young person, the judgment day is going to happen. And this is a Sahih Hadith, which is obviously a false prophecy from a false prophet, which is refuting you when you said that when the Quran speak about the judgment day is near, Muhammad did not mean that this is about now or very soon. You said, do you know how old the earth is? Right? This is explain what Muhammad meant. Muhammad in his lifetime, he was claiming that judgment day is near to the point people who are around him, they will die. They will not, before they die, they will have the judgment day coming upon them. The mic is yours. Oh boy. Okay. Um, now I have to admit um, that I have not uh, prior to this seen this particular hadith before, so I can't give you a detailed commentary on it. Because um, uh, I'm, I, I know I don't make up my theology as I go, I go along, like uh, 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 many Christians uh, 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 do. Uh, 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 but, um, but from what I am reading uh, from the, some of the commentaries of this narration in Arabic, they, they are saying that this suggests that this boy is not actually going to live. Very long. He's not going to actually reach uh, uh, um, uh, adulthood. He's going to die very uh, long. I would have to read more about this to answer you. you know, uh, that's that's all I can say. Uh, yeah. What? This boy, he will not live long. Where it says that it doesn't say that. Guys, do you see anywhere it says that this person he will not live long? It doesn't say that. You see between two brackets? Do you see what in bracket? Even that one doesn't exist there. He didn't say anything of that. You, you Muslims are really weird. In order to escape the disaster, you have to, what, are you going to call a friend? Call a friend. The words is clear in Arabic and in English that this boy, before he get old, not die. He did not even mention anything about his death. Before he get old, the judgment day is going to be happening. That's it. And that is enough to prove that you Muslim should not follow Muhammad in any way. Whatever he said to you about Jesus, obviously it's a lie. 
how you can trust him? When you say to me, when I ask you, show me one miracle about your prophet, you are the one who chose this miracle, correct, guys? It is you who mentioned to me the moon split and the judgment day is coming. I'm not the one who mentioned it to you. It was your choice. And then you said, oh, uh, I don't mean judgment day is coming very soon. No, 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 no. Do you know how old the earth? And then in order to understand what Muhammad meant, we better go and see what Muhammad said. And obviously Muhammad in his time is teaching that judgment day is very, very, very near to the point. You see this young man, young person? Young person, it means like he's a youth. Maybe 16 years old, maybe 17. Before he reached to 30, judgment day is going to happen, which means within 15 years from now. That is a disaster. That's a very clear forgery of Muhammad, who he claimed that he know the hour. How he know? Where he got this from? How he know that this is the person how we can measure how long is going to take before the judgment day to come? Your mark, Sunni. Or Sunni, sorry. Both Sunni and Sunni. Um, uh, after reading about this from Ibn Kathir and others, uh, this issue, by the way, is a very old issue. It's old so issue. People don't think he just made this up. It's a very, very old issue. And its, it's response is very easy. Here, according to Ibn Kathir and others, that this is not talking about a precise time. Because the Quran and many other narrations of hadith, the Prophet himself uh, says, I don't know the hour. And the Quran says, no one knows the hour except Allah. So knowing when the hour will come is only the remit of Allah and no one else. But here, the prophet is 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 is, um, is answering them when they ask them about the hour. He's telling them, he's not telling them when the precise the hour is, but he's telling them essentially when. But by, by the time this young boy has uh, grown up and died, or this boy dies, uh, you will all this this century will end. You you will all will die. Basically, this generation that you live in or this everyone on the face of this earth currently now will die and he said this before in other times he said you ask me about the hour its knowledge belongs to allah and i swear by allah no one alive today is breathing today but from now from this day forth a hundred years from now there will not be a single Soul that is alive, trying to tell them, don't worry too much about when the hour will come. On your own spirituality, focus on on your own mini uh, hour, which is when you will die, when you will no longer be on this earth. Do, do, do you see? Yeah. You now I go back to the Trinity, which is clearly, clearly, we don't know. <clears throat> Wait, 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 Sunni. I want to ask you what the word haram mean. What haram mean? Your mind. Somebody, he is al haram. What does that mean in Arabic? Your mind. You will not grow very old. You will not get very seen. Yeah, but in Arabic, when we say somebody is in the stage of haram, what, what age did that start? He will not grow very old, correct. But what is that? Like, you know, what does that mean? What age is that one we call him old, let us say? What is that? Do you know? Go ahead. He's searching Google. Okay, search Google, no problem. I'm waiting for you. When you are ready, let me know. 
Let us see. Because you will get an answer which is going to destroy everything you say. Are you ready? Still searching Google. No problem. See, Muslims, Muslims, by the way, <clears throat> uh, always they assume that you are not a person who knows. And especially in Arabic, you have no idea what, what this word means. And you are reading translation, so they can come with whatever, you know, whatever answers they, they want. That's it. Are you there, Sunni? <clears throat> so what haram? What haram present? What age? What age? Oh boy. all this time for to find the meaning of the word why it's so hard a second ago you were explaining to us what this word mean and blah 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 and suddenly you have no idea what the word means You see guys I'm talking about? Isn't it him a second ago was explaining to us and the interpretation of the Quran, what it says, please nobody put his hand up until we finish with Sunni. But now we do not know. He is searching. What, what does that mean? Why it's complicated? Are you there, Sunni? Guys, anyone will call names, I will give you a dot. Anyone call names, I will give you a dot. You think, I told you, you think it's 60? All right, guys, he said it's 60. You think it's 60. Let us go with this. The guy is a youth. The guy they are talking about in the hadith is a youth. What youth mean, guys? What, what youth mean? Someone he is, what? 15, 16, 17, teenage. That means maximum. We heard you, all of us saying that the prophet saying that all those people in front of him, he's talking to the Muslims, all of them, they will not live until this person he became 60. That's a disaster. You do not fix it, you destroy it. Because that will be, will be a, a big problem. There is no way all of them, those people, they will die in 30 years from now or in 40 years from now. That is a false prophecy. That means Muhammad himself, he had to die before this person. So obviously, I understand why uh, why uh, uh, Sunni he is really in trouble right now, because now we discover that Muhammad is fabricating stories, and he is a false prophet, and he have he have no prophecy except the false one, and yet they want to teach us about the Trinity. And actually, if you think about it. Nobody put your hand up, please. Nobody. Until we finish with Sunni. 
this issue arising very old. So what is very old? Very old because you, obviously it's exposing your profit. Are we very old too? The people before us raise it. It's mean they question your profit and obviously your profit is making up stories. So what if it's very old? So what we can do? Your profit was exist 1400 years ago. Should I bring in your profit to make it very new? We are answering. Actually, this is more important from the questions because obviously your profit is not a profit. He's a false one. Secondly, we answer everything you say. And when we ask you about your profit miracles, you fail to give us anything. Actually, the Quran, the Quran, guys, is full of verses. People keep asking Muhammad, how come you don't have any miracle? As an example, chapter 2, verse 118. The ignorant one, they said, we wish if Allah, he speak to us or he give us a sign, a miracle. Right? But this is supposedly about what? About Musa's. The Muslim, they might say to you, this is about Musa's, this is not about Muhammad. But the fact, it is about Muhammad. People, they are asking for just a miracle and Muhammad always, he failed to give one. In chapter 2, verse number 211, Allah is saying supposedly, ask the children of Israel how many miracles we gave them. Okay, how come the children of Israel, they are giving tons of miracles, but the God of Islam cannot give the Muslims one miracle? Something fishy there. Allah, he gave always miracles, but when it's come to Muhammad, that's it. Even when Zechariah, he asked for uh, for a miracle, Allah gave him. Allah gave Mary, supposed to a miracle. Allah gave everybody a miracle except Muhammad. When Muhammad, he come with his miracle, we find it's false. Actually, the Quran says, وَمَا مَنَعَنَا Nothing made us refrain from giving miracles except Former generations, they refuse to believe in them. That is a false accusation or false claim because the Jews, they believe in the miracles and the Christians, they believe in the miracle. Not only they believe, they, are, they love it. What do you mean they deny it? They did not deny it. In chapter 6, verse number 37, they say, we wish that his God give him one miracle. We wish, it's a wish. All what they are asking for is to give a miracle and look what Allah he says to them. Guys, read with me the verse. They say, we wish that Allah can give a sign or a miracle. Say, Allah can do a miracle, but you do not know. Where is the miracle? <laughs> Where is it? We are waiting for it. What do you mean say to them, Allah is capable? Allah is capable, but he still he cannot do it. Do it. Now, about the spitting the moon, by the way, that would be very stupid to say, and obviously Mr. Sunni is not educated about his religion. Why? Because the verse which it says, uh, you know, nothing refrain us from sending miracles. But former generations, they did not believe in them. If you go in the book of like, if there, there, there is a, there is a, let's say, the number of re revelation, Quran today is not the same way the Quran was revealed by numbers. So if you go to that chapter, chapter 17, verse number 59, you will see this one sent long after the chapter of the moon, which means if the moon is split is a sign and it is a miracle, then Allah is saying we refrain from sending miracle is a mistake. In the chapter of the moon, it says, the moon is split and judgment day is near. And Mr. Sunni, he said, this is a miracle. Let us go with it, even though we prove it's a false miracle. 
Then we go to verse chapter 17, verse number 59, which sinned long after that chapter. Allah saying he refrained from sending miracles. So Muhammad is contradicting himself. How Allah he split the moon and he gave you a miracle. And how you say Allah refrained from sending miracles. And why he refrained? Because former generations, they refused to believe in them. Obviously, the Quran is written by many gods.